Hey guys and welcome to another Cubase Tips tutorial video. So following up from my previous video where I talked about core paths, one thing I actually forgot to mention to you guys was this AV feature uh, on some of the pads. Now. AV stands for adaptive voicing and when this is enabled you can just right click here and tell any chord to use adaptive voicing or turn it off. What it, what it actually does is it will listen to the voicing of the previous chord or the previous like few chords and it will decide what the voicing should be for when you actually play the key with AV on. So for example if this G major had a lower set of voice voices inside the the G major chord at uh, minor sorry um, what it would do was when you click on that a it's already listened to that G minor and it's decided what the appropriate voicing would be for when you click on a so this is a really a handy little feature because if you've got um, you know in your progression if you've got a chords that were higher voiced every time you go to go back to that a even if it you know the previous progression was a lower voice one it will listen to that and it'll automatically adapt itself to what it should what cubase thinks it should be which is quite nice now you can also um use you'll notice this one's yellow because i've actually you can right click and select it to be an adaptive voice in adaptive voicing reference voicings reference it's a little bit of a tongue twister um, so what when you um, use any AVs on pads it will use this as the reference as well and it will kind of factor into um, its decisions when it comes to automatically voicing the chords for when you're playing which is quite cool what I want to show you more of today though is some of the features inside the MIDI editor. So if we just open up this section here, obviously you've got all your standard panels on the left. Most of these, most people will tend to ignore. Um, I know I'm a culprit for it as well. I mean, I've been using Cubase for a very long time and there's some things on here which I've only in the last month or so uh, started using, which I thought, my word, what, how, how have I gone for so long without using these tools um, so let's just cover the basics obviously you've got your piano roll down here you've got your your different controller lane uh, for different things depending on what you've got to select it on if you want to do stuff on your velocity or um, you want to do control certain modulation parameters for different things or your expression or if you want to add another lane you can add another lane by clicking the plus sign here and say okay I want that on my articulations of dynamics so if you're running a patch that's got key switches and you've got your expression map set up then obviously you can control it from here but what I want to show you is some of these nifty little features which um, are going to cut down on your on time and just allow you to do things a lot quicker. Excuse me. So you'll notice up here there's this dark area and at the moment it says no object selected. Now if I click on a note, all of a sudden you get all this different data come up. Okay, So you can control the pitch of the note, you can control the velocity of the note from here, and you can also do things like change the, like apply this note to a different MIDI channel. Um, this is more to do with when you're using, say, contact. You've got a load of patches loaded up, and you want to create a Defici sort of um, patch out of all those patches. If that makes sense, and you can actually send individual notes. So, if you've got, it'd be easier if I just quickly show you actually. So. Here, if I've got this piano loaded up and it's on MIDI channel one, uh, if I just quickly chuck this on, and you'll notice that's on MIDI channel two. If I set this to any, and then open this up and select these notes down here and tell them to go to MIDI channel two, they'll now be assigned to that strings. Um, patch which is opened and it'll play those. Oh, I just want to get this so you can actually see things. There we go. So if I open this back up, you'll see it's actually triggering that as well. So you can do to VC inside of, um, you know, contact. Now there is a drawback, um, especially if you use key switches. 
and it's that if you want let's say this was loads of different string patches loaded up and they all had the same key switches and I wanted to trigger the staccato and all the patches it wouldn't work it would only send it to MIDI channel 1 and there's no real work around for this but fortunately um, there is actually a very clever contact script which I will find for you there's, yeah there's a very handy contact script which is free to download and it is by the same fellow the same lovely fellow that did the video which I linked in the previous one I'm just trying to find where it is okay there we go so if you go to this website I'll link it in the pres in the prescription <laughs> I'll prescribe you this website in the link section below um, what this will do if it, you download it you put it where you need to put it inside of your directory and it will give you a script um, which allows you to then send um, stuff like your key switches to all of the individual it will trigger all the individual key switches inside of a patch if you've got loads of patches loaded up inside a contact hopefully that didn't sound too confusing I could have probably worded that better uh, so this guy is a legend Davidoff I don't want to say your first name because I might get it wrong but you're an absolute legend and thank you so much for making this script and making it free for everybody to download it's very kind of you um, so yeah I've gone off on a bit of a, a tangent there but I've explained to you at least the whole Davisi thing there uh, let me just sort these out so if I put these back on MIDI channel 1 there we go okay so the next thing I want to show you is the chord editing window now if you open this tab up, this thing is going to save you so much time it's unbelievable I've been smacking my head off the desk because a lot of these features I didn't even realize what they did until a couple of, a couple of months ago well I, I kind of knew what they did I just never sort of used them because you get so engrossed in the piano roll that you forget about all the stuff around it um, so okay so here I've got this chord but let's say I have no idea what this chord is if you drag and select the notes it will suddenly tell you oh it's a C major chord isn't that handy to know and it will do this you know for individual notes if you're not sure what the individual note is I mean I know you've got like C2 it's labeled there or if you zoom in very far on the piano roll it will actually tell you what the notes are but a quicker way to do it is actually just click on the note and then up here it will actually tell you what it is so that's a B1 now when it when it comes to selecting the chords like this and it will show you what it is a really handy thing is if you're actually programming some kind of run or line let's say for okay let's <laughs> That sounds funny. Let's say we were doing that. If you weren't sure what key it was in or what chord you could layer over the top, you could do the same. Just drag and select. Oh, it hasn't quite done it that time. Okay, that's interesting. That didn't go right. Okay, so if the voice is a little bit further apart, then it will work on it. Um, but you can see here, if you if you select over them, it will say, okay, that's a D that's a crazy chord and you can actually then click on this and it'll add it to your chord track down here which so you know exactly what that chord is if I okay and then you can obviously you could drag and drop that into your chord pad and then go from there like I showed you in the previous video which is which is handy handy to know now the, another thing here is you know is you've got triads and then you've got your four note chords so these individual options allow you to instantly draw in without having to do it yourself using individual notes majors minors sustains augmented diminished whatever it is and just by clicking on one of these if I wanted a major chord just click on it and okay and if I want to go hey I want a C major click on the C and there you go I've got a C major if I wanted a D major oh there's a D major what if I wanted a D minor I can click on that and it will give me a D minor it's so 
so handy. I wish I knew about this sooner. Um, and it's the same with the the four note chords. If I wanted a major seventh, C major seventh. There you go. Boom. C major seventh. So it's a very very quick and easy way to put chords in if you know what you need. Now another handy feature over here is this inversions and what this will do is it'll move the chord up through the scale so if I was just to loop this section here which is really 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 handy um, and it's quite interesting when you select large sections of MIDI data in like for an orchestra when you just go on a track and then just moving the inversions around and seeing how they sound it's, it's quite cool um, but also you can do this other handy thing called drop notes so let's say you've got a patch loaded up and you're playing across uh, a full string ensemble patch and you've got a chord that you you've got in like I mean, like that and it's quite it's all very close together the notes aren't voiced in a way which would suit the patch um, what you can do is if you select the notes you, you've got these drop notes down here um, so for the first two will only work if you've got three notes or a triad chord working if you've got more than three then this other one will work okay so move the second highest note on an octave lower so the second highest note in this chord will get moved an octave lower like so and you can keep clicking it and it will keep doing it okay now if you're doing it with this one it will move the third highest note an octave lower like that so these work really well for triads now for here move the second and fourth highest notes an octave lower so I can click on that and there you go it will start splitting them up and then I can use a combination of these to really change things about and it sounds like crap <laughs> but you get the idea okay um, it's just a it's, a it's a way you can split things quite easily across the voices I mean that was a really terrible demonstration there but hey ho things happen um, so yeah, the chord editing tab is a very, very useful tab to use for when you're making your music. Uh, obviously you've got your normal quantize features here, which are pretty self-explanatory. Um, if I just quickly show you what quantize ends means. So if you're playing something in live and let's say you've overshot it a little bit like that, depending on what your grid set to here, if you go to quantize and then select the notes and go to quantize lengths, it will snap them to uh, the ends to the grid. Um, you can also, let's say, if I change this to 30 second notes, um, if you wanted fixed lengths, it will cre it will snap the notes to the length of the grid of what you've got it set to. So there you go, fixed length. If I wanted it in, you know, uh, a fourth, it will snap it to that. Okay, so it's just very handy little things to to use and know about which I use that you'll be end up using them quite a lot especially if you're playing in live um, so yeah that's that's it for this video it's just a, a look at some of the extra MIDI features that I've just thought of one more I haven't shown you when you're inputting notes obviously you can either draw them in or you can play them in live but if you're a terrible keyboard player like me um, you can actually do it this way. So over here, step you've got step input. All right, you've got to make sure it's enabled on here. I've got pretty much everything enabled. Uh, but there you go, step MIDI input. That's what you need. And what it will do, let's just draw a chord in here, just to give you an idea. If you're not drawing a chord in this way, you know, or you've got a chord in mind and you want to play it in on your keyboard but you can't keep in time live because you're terrible like me uh, then you can use this as a step input so if you turn it on you'll get this blue bar come up and it's a little bit fiddly actually moving it around but it you, you just grab it and you kind of just move it like that and it'll work but what it'll allow you to do is if you say if you wanted to program a chord in then I, if I do a C chord if I just hit C, it'll automatically put it in like that. Now, if I don't want to do a run, let's say I want to go... Uh, you 
can input the notes with your MIDI controller without having to worry about it going out of time and it will do it logically. You know? It's a very um, handy, handy little trick, that one. So, finally concluded this video. <laughs> Hopefully you found it useful, guys. Um, I'm going to be doing some more Cubase tips video in the next couple of weeks. Next week I've got a very busy week ahead of me um, and I'm not going to really get a chance to do anything on the computer. So a couple of weeks time I'll get some more videos out to you guys. Thank you all for subscribing as well by the way and all you new subscribers welcome to the channel. Um, we've nearly hit the 1k mark. We're so close. It's so it's so awesome. I can't wait. Um, maybe do a bit of a uh, competition giveaway or something like that when we get to the 1k mark. I'll get a couple of t-shirts made and um, send them out to people. Not everybody, just like a select few of people because that will just end up costing me an arm and a leg. <laughs> I'll end up bankrupting myself buying 900 or 1,000 t-shirts. That'd be crazy. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Are you looking for custom-made track icons to work within your Cubase or Nuendo mixer? Then head over to poundsound.co.uk and check out our large range of track icons available to buy through the website, or try out a free pack today.